Okay, so what we're going to do here is just look at uh, these examples about how to use and, and find out friction, uh, solve friction problems. All right, so basically what we have here is your uh, 1,000 kilogram car breaks down on the side of the road. You push the car with 600 newtons of force so that it moves at a constant speed. So we've got 1,000 kilogram car being pushed with 600 newtons, moves at a constant speed. What is the force of friction between the tires and the road? So we're going to calculate that and also calculate the coefficient of friction. Well, like all these problems, you're always going to start with, you know, we've got a surface. Okay, that's fine. Uh, however, the first thing we want to think about is that there is a weight to this car, mg. Now, there's no other forces pushing down or pushing up uh, on this object, and it's not clearly, clearly it's not accelerating through the ground. So there must be a reaction force. In fact, that's our normal force. Now, since there's no other forces pushing up or pushing down, we know that the normal force must balance perfectly with the gravitational force. So whatever the value of the, of the gravitational force is, we know that will be the value of the frictional force. Now, it says here that you're pushing the car with 600 newtons, so I'm going to push the car, F subscript 1, we always get subscripts, 600 newtons. And the question is, what is the force of friction? So we're going to draw this backwards and look at figuring out what the frictional force is on this object. Well, in this situation here, uh, we're not even going to really need to use uh, this part of the equation yet. Um, the key here is that if we're pushing this object with constant speed, that implies that the acceleration in the x y direction, or sorry, in the x direction, the horizontal direction, must be zero because there's no acceleration. Well, if there's no acceleration, this means that in the horizontal direction, there must be balanced forces. There's no acceleration. And therefore, um, if we pick uh, this way to be positive and up to be positive, notice the difference now. I've got two positive directions I picked then in the horizontal direction we know that the F1 minus the force of friction must be zero and therefore F1 must equal the force of friction so that means therefore the frictional force must be equal at 600 newtons and that's because it's moving at a constant speed alright well it says what is the coefficient of friction well here's where we use the fun equation there we go. And if we're trying to find the coefficient of friction, that's mu. It's the frictional force divided by the normal force. Okay. Well, the frictional force we just found was 600 newtons. Okay. Well, it turns out that we need that normal force after all. The normal force is the connector between the horizontal direction. So over here, we know that the, in the vertical, I'll we'll call it the y direction, or some people like to call it the vertical direction, we can say y direction, we know that it's, the forces are also balanced in that direction. And since I picked up as positive, the normal force minus mg must equal zero, and just as we had originally discussed, the normal force is just m times g. Only in this case, there's no objects pushing up or pushing down. Well, that's basically 1,000 times 9. So that's the, the normal force. So we take 600 divided by 1000 times 9.8, or whatever the value of the normal force is. And this will tell us our coefficient. So doing that calculation quickly, I mean, getting the numbers fine. We end up with 0 0.06. That is the coefficient of friction. It's pretty close to zero. It's very slippery, that's for sure. Okay, uh, now that we've got that, um, what we're going to look at is the next part, which is uh, right here. All right, we have two people pushing a 50 kilogram box across the ground. One is pushing with 200 newtons to the right, so we start our free body diagram. We say F1 equals 200 newtons. Another is pushing with a force to the left with only 15 newtons, so that's a pretty small force. Good. Um, the coefficient of friction, I'm just going to write that off to the side, is 0 0.15, and it's a 50 kilogram box. 
Okay, well, what other forces do we know are acting on this? Well, we know that since the object is on Earth, there must be an mg. Okay, and we can actually calculate that because it's just 50 times 9.8. So we know that the downward force on this object due to gravity is 490 newtons. Okay, well, since this is in contact with, this, with the ground, there must also still be a reaction force or a normal force. Now, we can make this easier on ourselves um, simply because we know there's no force, act, other forces acting up and there's no other forces acting down. So in this case, the normal force is going to exactly balance with the gravitational force. So I'm just skipping this y direction equation, but if you really want to be precise, you could include this y direction uh, formula and basically, or procedure, it's not even really much, so much a formula, it's a procedure to show that it's 490. Now we're not done. Most people would stop here and be like, oh, okay, this is easy. We just go 200 minus 15, we've got it. Problem is, is that there is friction, a small frictional force due to this coefficient and the normal force. Now, since the object is being pushed 200 this way, 15 this way, clearly this object is accelerating to the right. So we know that the acceleration is this direction. Since friction opposes the direction of motion, there is also a frictional force pushing backwards. So how do, why does this matter? Well, here's why it matters. If we write sigma f equals ma, sum of the forces is mass times acceleration. Since we're trying to figure out this acceleration right here, we need to know um, what the sum of the forces is. Well, since the right is positive, we know that's f1 minus f2, and here's where it comes in, minus the frictional force equals ma. All right, well, that's fine. Uh, so we go F1 minus F2, and then we go, oh, wait, frictional force is mu Fn. That's the fun equation. I've just replaced frictional force with mu Fn. And now some of you are like, oh, okay, well, this is easy. Um, we've got mu Fn, and here we have, we know that since there's nothing pushing down and nothing pulling up besides just gravity, the gravitational force here must balance with the normal force. So therefore we know the normal force is 490. So at this point, since we're solving for acceleration, we can just divide both sides by the mass. So therefore the acceleration is F1, which is 200, minus 15, minus 0 0.15 times 490. divided by 50. So the acceleration in this case is going to be 200 minus 15 minus 0.15 times 490 and then divide that by 50 and we get 2.23 meters per second per second. And the direction of course is right. The positive sign tells us it's right anyways because we picked positive to be, oh sorry, uh, because we picked positive to be um, to the right, then we know that that's the solution. Okay, we'll flip this over and look at one more example. You can always pause and rewind that. I'm going to let you guys finish this example and then once you're done, you're going to work on this frictional forces worksheet for 25 marks. Okay, showing your free body diagrams and all that kind of stuff. All right, so shopping cart, the mass, 23 kilograms. It's being accelerated to the right with 1.5 meters per second per second. The force is acting in the cart as follows. One force is pushing to the right, F1, with 110 newtons. Another force is pushing to the right, 60 newtons. Notice I've changed the size of these to scale somewhat appropriately. Third force is pushing down with 10 newtons. Um, determine the coefficient of friction. So we're trying to figure out the mu value between the two. Well, the diagram's not done, and this is the key part. We know that this is a cart, so it must, or it's a mass, so it must have gravity pulling down on it. And that, in fact, that's 23 times 9.8. Now, 23 times 
is 225.4 newtons. Now, since there's forces pushing down, there must be a normal force acting upwards. And if there's 225.4 pushing down and 10 pushing down, the reaction force to balance it, since there's no other forces involved, must be 235.4 newtons. Now this isn't it. It is clearly is accelerating to the right, as we can see right here. I'm going to lose power in a second. Um, and that's our positive direction. So there must be a frictional force acting backwards. Like that. So we just go sigma F equals zero. Sorry, that's my fault. M times A. We have F1 plus F2 minus the force of friction equals mass times acceleration. We know this is F1 plus F2 minus mu Fn. That's just the replacement of for the fun equation. And we have all this information. We're just going to rearrange the formula. Nothing tricky there. Uh, you can pause it, rewind it, make sure you follow all the steps. Uh, we want to solve for mu. So I have to divide by negative Fn. So mu is 23 times 1.5 minus 110 minus 60 all divided by minus 235.4 plugging this into your calculator you're gonna get uh, 23 times 1.5 minus 100 110 minus 60 divided by 235.4 and you get 0 0.57 that's the coefficient of friction no units remember that that's important there are no units for that again solving for the normal